All right. Good evening. Welcome to Unplugged. This is San Diego's one and only musical variety show. Maybe you're here on a date night. Maybe you're here just to reconnect with your community and meet others and make some music and hear some music. We would like to welcome our host. If you would please give a round of applause for Tim Moore. Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Unplugged the Variety Show. The only place in town, once a month you can go. And you know, this night is really meant for the music community, number one, first and foremost. Um, a night where performers can come in and reconnect with old friends and hopefully meet a few new ones. We got a little chatter in the background. What's going on? <laughs> Cut the chatter. We've got business, right? Um, and so, other than that, it's a, it's a great date night, and the other half of the audience, um, I wish we had more of the other half of the audience here. It's nice for them to learn about all you folks that are performing around town and ways to catch your shows coming up. Um, in the true spirit of the variety show, tonight's theme is sort of one of, uh, I think I could title it, The Journey. Each one, each, per, each artist has a journey that they have gone through that has led them to their place now in this uh, community of music, and it's, it, it's, they're all different. They're, they're like fingerprints, and no two are the same, or even close, quite frankly. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I think you're gonna hear about the journey, and I think you're gonna like this season, so get ready. Come on, smile, do, do something, <laughs> I need a little jump start here. Things, um, things have been tough for me, but I won't tell you my story. Um, the gentleman I'm going to start the evening with, uh, and who I will introduce you to in just a moment, um, is really rather spectacular. So let me get my glasses on here. There's so much material. Boom, boom, boom. He's appeared in all, on stages in all 50 states, and he's traveled and performed in shows in four continents throughout the world. Um, he's well-versed in opera. He's worked in production by Puccini, Verdi, Mozart, and others. He has uh, a long history and experience in musical theater, having appeared in Tarzan, <laughs> Sunday in the Park with George, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, and several others. And he's done an awful lot of work in cabaret. We'll talk about that in a bit as well. He studied with the great Stephen Sondheim. And let's see. Now, add to that wonderful resume, he's performed in front of Pope Paul II. Get that. And he's performed in front of, as a part of a 10 piece orchestra in front of Nelson Mandela at a special event. And early on, he, he performed in front of Richard Nixon and went on to uh, do the same for Bill Clinton, George Bush, Barack Obama, and who else is on his presidential list? George Bush, Gerald Ford, and Ronald Reagan. There we go. And he's currently performing in San Diego Musical Theater's production of Sweeney Todd. Um, and as I said, he studied with Stephen Sondheim, and he actually studied with Stephen Sondheim for the purpose of this very role. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to, to hear what he has to say. You're going to learn a lot. And I want to welcome, with that, I want to welcome Mr. DeAndre Simmons. <laughs> How was your trip here, by the way? Did you find adequate parking? Uh, somewhat. <laughs> but there's two living rooms, right? There's one down the street. No, actually, that's the old location. It closed it almost a year ago, nine months ago. I should have given you the darn address. Well, something's in there. Someone is in there. Someone's in there. Yeah, but the I saw it tonight. I think they're oh, son, of, son of a gun. I'm sorry you made that diversion. That's all right. I all right. Hello, everybody. This is DeAndre Simmons. I just want to make it clear that I did not perform for Richard Nixon while he was president. 
You know, as I read through your bio, and I read about your background, and I listened to the multitude of videos that are there on YouTube and some of the old channels, uh, I mean, I was stuck as to where to start with you. Your body of work is so broad, so deep, and so impressive that it's tough to kind of you know, take an arrow to the, to the dartboard and come up with a great place to start. But, so let's kind of start with opera. I mean, well, in fact, let's go back in time, and I want to ask you, when was it in your life where you figured, I'm really good at this, I want to put my efforts into it, and, and you decided that art was for you? Well, um, I, I am not an anomaly in my, in my family in terms of having a talent, uh, or not even a musical talent. A lot of my older family, peers, peer family, uh, sing, play an instrument, many of whom play an instrument by ear, you know. Uh, so it wasn't, uh, you know, sort of unusual that I could sing. But what I did eventually notice was that uh, I got a certain level of attention, all right, right? Or maybe someone sat up in their seat a little bit more when I was singing. And that started quite quite early, actually. Uh, but, you know, that that's all born out of nice Easter speeches and the things that we had to do, right? Uh, and then growing up in grade school here in San Diego, we had people come to the school, right? We had opera singers from SBO, we had uh, instrumentalists from the symphony, dancers from the ballet, or and on and on, right? So I, I we were exposed to it a great deal. Unfortunately, that is not as uh, common as it once was. And I, I knew that I loved it. I knew that I loved the theater. And my grandmother uh, took me to an audition, my first audition when I was six. And while I was sort of hesitant about it, she sort of pushed me on, you know, and sort of said, you know, if you're half as good as what you've been doing around the house, you can you might you might want to try it out, you know. <laughs> and that that was the beginning of it. All right, so let's take a look at, at the breadth of your uh, your talents here. You go from opera to musical theater to cabaret. How do you I mean, where did you start and I'm confused. <laughs> the opera, <laughs> musical theater is where you really cut your teeth. Am I, am I right? Yes. Okay. And from there, opera crept into the picture. And you were wildly successful in, in your travels and in the productions that you were in. It, I mean, you are worldwide. I mean, you performed on stages over four continents, as I read. And you, you uh, were responsible for being, you know, I don't quite know quite how to phrase this, but you did the work with Mozart and Puccini, Verdi, and others. And how did opera fall into this wonderful world? Well, it started when I was in grade school, and opera singers came to the schools. I I loved the presentation, and at, at that time we were taken to the San Diego Opera, and we saw any number of, of shows, and I'm very, very fortunate to say that uh, a couple of those people that I saw then who were in the earlier parts of their career, uh, 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 someone that I, I know uh, is Renee Fleming, right? Uh, one of the greatest opera singers still singing. Yeah. And she did Tatiana and Onegin and Rosalta, etc. And my voice teacher and, and principal, a 
had a vocal coach, Dave Morris did a great deal here also. Uh, so it was sort of like a, an, an amazing full circle moment when I got to know them as an adult and as a singer. So uh, when my voice changed at 15, uh, it sort of leaned more towards classical music. I had always loved it, but I, I was doing a great deal of musical theater around San Diego at the time when we had a plethora of theater houses, right? Yes, yes, yes. Whether it was whether it was our wonderful uh, Starlight Musical Theater uh, or uh, the Spreckles or Sledgehammer, on and on, right. most of which are closed, unfortunately. Um, and so, while I always loved opera, it didn't lend itself to a you know, 12 year old me, right? And so, when I started, my voice changed to 15, I started singing, you know, Schubert songs or Strauss songs, things like that. And, and then I went to Europe for the first time when I was 17 uh, to do a Lieder Abend, an evening of song. Um, and that's just sort of how it sort of started, right? And, and, and how did you end up, let's go to Stephen Sondheim here, how did you make that connection? It was well, my longtime musical theater coach was Barbara Cook, all right? And I worked with her for several years uh, on the gamut of American songbook, classic musical theater, uh, the whole nine yards. And one day I was working on some Sondheim song, right? Uh, obviously she became prolific at uh, performing the Sondheim songs, and which he loved, her doing, and I was singing a song, I don't remember which, and she said, you ought to sing this for Steve. And she reached over and picked up the phone and called him, and said, hey Steve, I've got someone here that you should hear. And the next week I was at his home and singing for him. And how long did it take you to get immersed in the Sweeney Todd uh, so, I mean, not long, right? I, I didn't have an, an enormous bank of Sondheim songs at that time, right? And so I, I was singing things like Pretty Women as a solo, and uh, my friends uh, already, and even Joanna. Um, and so I worked on those with him. I did not work on Sydney at that time uh, with him, although I certainly wish I had now. Uh, and so we, that's all I said, we got right into it. I mean, I was already saying things like everybody says don't, um, children will listen, uh, uh, you know, any number of songs. So we had a, a good number of sessions uh, working on that music. Oh, that's terrific. Now, because you're in Sweeney Todd uh, here uh, with San Diego Musical Theater, uh, and because I know you have that, that experience working with Stephen Sondheim on that set of songs, um, speak to the process with Stephen. He's quite a different guy. He is a taskmaster, and in, in the context of Sweeney Todd, he's rather particular on precisely how he wants those songs interpreted, right down to the phrasing of the, of the words. Right. Almost. And, and I've watched workshops where he has taken students to test. How, what, what was the dynamic when the two of you were together? And was it difficult at times to deal with? Was it easy all the time? Even when there were, you know, differences of, when he expressed a difference of opinion? Tell, tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, I have always had teachers and mentors that were uh, firm in, in our working. So it wasn't unusual that he was quite direct about what he wanted, his idea of his music. Um, and, and he ultimately was very nice. You know, he was somewhat reserved, at least with me, right? Uh, we weren't besties. But he, he was kind, but he certainly had no problem saying, this is what I intended when I wrote this and why I wrote this. Uh, and this is what I would like to hear when you sing it. Uh, so when it's a, a show directly, it's quite more strict. Uh, when it's a song for a cabaret or something like that, he 
his his main idea and goal is to tell a story. Yes. And that doesn't mean that you can become sort of loosey goosey with what he writes, but it does mean that you have a little more room to to make sure that that story is being told, right? After you get beyond the point of having learned the notes and the rhythms uh, and the character, etc. All right, now you started your show September 20th at the San Diego Musical Theater. Yes. And you run through October 20th. Yes. <laughs> you must be packing the house up there. Well, you know, sometimes shows are um, a little <coughs> different, right? Uh, it's, it's not uh, Hello Dolly, which they're doing next season, so be sure to be there. I am not in it, but be sure to be there. Uh, and so it, it is a little harder sometimes for the audience to take in. Even when we did, I did Sunday in the Park with George, uh, it was the sort of the same thing. It was a little bit of pulling teeth to make sure the really? audience had got there. I love those shows. I, I love many them. people do. However, uh, and, and so you're such a draw. Well, and so uh, we we had some nice houses over the weekend, uh, but they they weren't sold out yet. Uh, but San Diego Musical Theater is, is such a wonderful, intimate theater and company that uh, the, the work they do is far more about telling stories and entertaining in a way that really reaches the audience because the, the performers are sort of right in the laps mm -hmm. of the, the audience members. And it's remarkable in that way and it's you know not being the civic or something like that where everyone is is completely aside from each other. So the hope is that after what seems to have been a very lovely review and uh, some word is getting out there, uh, we will have even greater uh, attendance and, and, and people coming to not only attend the tell, so to speak, but also to be familiar with San Diego Musical Theater, who is one of the only theaters in San Diego right now that is producing really high quality uh, musical theater. I was gonna say, I mean, they have a great reputation and bring in great people to, to marshal the productions. And um, they have a good slate of shows too. You know, there shouldn't be any question that you guys are gonna do really well with your houses as you approach that October 20 date. Um, let's talk cabaret. Uh, my background is cabaret. And my, my main interest is cabaret, and a couple of the audience who are in that genre. Um, as you use, you, you did a show for Sondheim, Sondheim called Sondheim, Sondheim and Me, I think. The song of Stephen Sondheim. And uh, you mentioned Trademark. That, what's that? Trademark. 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 <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that uh, you, you had a little more freedom, and uh, he was, it was easy for you to digest the differences in delivery and intent and so sure. forth. And talk a little bit about maybe how you responded once you had a chance to, to view your show, bits and pieces of it, and maybe some of the feedback you got from him. Well, he, he was very encouraging, and yeah. everything he heard, and we had worked on. Um, so I certainly had a great deal, uh, many tools in the bag, so to speak, uh, from which to pull. And it, he was extremely complimentary. And from what I have heard from other, even much larger artist, artists in the Broadway world, he had no problems with saying he didn't like something. So I, I take it as a real feather in the hat, so to speak, uh, that he was quite complimentary and encouraging. Congratulations. I had a chance to see a little bit of some of your cabaret performance online on YouTube. I wish there was more there. Maybe you can share a site where you can catch a little bit more. And by, by the way, while you're here, I want you to size up this room and think about it as a space where you might want to be sure you own. I'm in. Right here. Tell me when. Okay, well the owner happens to be sitting in the back here. I'm happy to make the introduction model. And hopefully we can get a date in pretty quick. Um, let's see, let's see. You know, I. I just want to say thank you for, for accepting the invitation. Um, it's an honor to have you on stage. And like I said, it's a, it's a real joy and it's exciting to, to have an opportunity to interview somebody that has such a broad and diverse 
but the skill set and body of work. And I hope that you folks enjoy this interaction. And uh, if you'd like, I understand you have a song on your belt. I would be happy to sing it. Do you? Yes. All right. Does Laura have your shoe music? She will in a moment. She will in a moment. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to remember that he's in Sweeney Pod at the San Diego Musical Theater. They're located up in San Mesa. It is a, a nice little thing. And the production manager happens to be sitting right over there at the bar. Say hi to Ron. Grab a ticket, grab a friend, and go catch this show. You'll be glad you did. And again, thank you very much. Be My pleasure. Great. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Stay tuned. We have a great show ahead. Oh, there you are. I want to call you So this is uh, my friend. Uh, Sweeney has just come, found himself back in London after escaping from uh, imprisonment in Australia uh, for 15 years. And he stumbles upon Mrs. Lovett, who has been pining for him even before he left. And she has tucked away his razors uh, while he's been gone. And she says to him, you know, now that you're back, you're gonna need some money and need something to do while you are seeking revenge for, uh, well, I won't tell you the story. You all have to come and see it. Uh, and so, um, so he picks up uh, one of his razors and sings to them it uh, in, an, in a celebration for himself of being reconnected with uh, his trade. Uh, my friends from Sweeney Todd.
Wasn't that something? Give my hand one more time. All right, we're going to do the best we can to book him uh, a day here, aren't we, Sam? Do you think he could do a night of, or two?